Hi, and welcome to Crit Hit Wild Podcast, where we talk about all things Marvel Crisis Protocol, and we cover a new character every week. This week, we're doing Gwenpool, and I'm Fred. I'm Brad. And I'm Steven. And we are without Brandon right now. There's a possibility that he might hop in at some point midstream, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, h- how are you doing today, Brad? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, that is good to hear. That's good to hear. How are you doing today, Stephen? Uh, uh, painting furiously. <laughs> That's getting, what I'm doing. Getting ready for uh, a series of tournaments coming up. Well, uh, I believe that there should be an ad kicking in very soon. And that was the ad, unless I missed the timing. <laughs> uh... So uh, that ad, it's an interesting story. Uh, I was recording it, and uh, I could, for some reason, my phone was only recording for one minute, so I had to fit my entire copy into one minute. So I'm talking super fast in that ad. It was was a weird, interesting situation. Next time, we will just record it separately, Fred, and I will... I'll make sure that doesn't happen. You'll make it. I don't have to yeah, fit it within yeah. a minute. It will play longer than a minute. I don't know why oh, that was yeah. happening. <laughs> I think that it had to do with my phone. I think that that's the problem. The problem's on my end. I don't know. That's that's the issue. We we can work it out. You gonna time anyway, the the? I've started putting a second ad an hour in. Are you gonna time that one and pause for it too? Uh, probably not. I'm not gonna be able to <laughs> keep track of that. I uh, th- there's no way I remember. <laughs> I, th- I think the amount of uh, of my memory is maxed at almost every episode. Uh, speaking of which, there are some tournaments that I have been failing to plug coming up, and one of them's quite soon. Specifically, that's the one that's happening at Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston on April the fifteenth. That's this Saturday everyone so if you're hearing my voice come on down it's uh it'll be fun it'll probably be a lot smaller than the last last one but it'll still be a good time i'll be there brad will be there uh steven you will probably be there is that correct yes yes i i plan on making the trip yeah we'll have a crew and we'll I, have a group and here. i think bork is going to be there and he hasn't been to a tournament in a long time That'll be nice to, to have him trounce me in a tournament. <laughs> so, uh, come on down. Uh, but not only that tournament, there is a tournament coming up on April the 22nd. So that's the following Saturday. Uh, Steven, why don't you tell them where that one is? Okay. Uh, that is uh, at Recess Games in North Olmsted, Ohio. That's up near me in the Cleveland area. Um this is a cap tournament at 16 people. Entry fee is $20, but it's kind of different because uh, you have to go to Recess's website, uh, recessgames.com, click on the events, look for MCP, go to MCP and prepay, and then you put your list on long shanks. So they just don't... Um, I, I don't know why they do it that way, but that's the store policy. So, But there's a big prize pool because the top eight will get prizes on this one out of 16. So oh, well, wow. well, well worth the $20, yeah. So, yeah, we're not doing first, second, third. We're doing a first through eighth. And I don't know if they have a best painted model, but they might also have that. So we'll, we'll see. Stephen gave us a, recently a virtual tour of, of Recess Games, and it is huge and nice. So go check it out. It seems like it's a really cool space. Yeah, we have seven spots uh, open currently for the tournament. So Okay, uh, well, go fill those up, everyone. Yes, thank you. Uh, no problem. And I have one more that I need to, to plug. On April the 29th, uh, there is a tournament that is taking place at Fabricators Forge in Pittsburgh. Uh, that one is run by Bryce, and that will likely also be a very good time. I've been to some of his tournaments. They're fun. They're a lot of fun. 
and uh, he he does run a good tournament. I will give him that. So yes, yes. So I believe that those are the tournaments that we know about right now. Those are the tournaments for this month, and I will try to be on top of plugging out more tournaments in the future. But sometimes, like I said earlier, sometimes I forget. Oh, Fred! Right. I was I Fred. I do have one more. I I was actually just looking. So oh okay. Um, on the 29th, Cork, who came to your last monthly uh-huh. tournament with his Dayton crew, is having one at the, uh, I believe it's the Bookery in Dayton, Ohio. That's right by the Air Force Base. Okay. There you go. There's another one on the 29th uh, at Bookery. So, All right. So options. this is good. <laughs> uh, you, everyone, you've got options to get your games in. Go play some games and have fun. Uh, so this is going to probably be a shorter episode than normal. Uh, we have, we recorded our last episode something like four days ago. So there is, yeah, there's not a whole lot of new stuff to talk about. Uh, but there is some, we have a couple things, uh, like we know what, uh, we know that Immortal Hulk is Midnight Sun's affiliated and defenders and defenders yeah uh, yeah (laughs) thank you for saying that that is that is also relevant um and one of those things i care very deeply about Uh, and then just for completeness modok 2 is hydra and criminal syndicate hydra is baffling yeah that's that's a weird one i don't know why he's hydra Uh, Probably because Hydra wanted another model. I'm not sure. I don't think he's darn Hydra. It it feels like they're uh, using some characters as fill for the uh, the uh, factions that don't have so many people. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I think that he's built like a criminal syndicate model, or at least he's 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 the leader, right? (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So obviously, you're right. <laughs> he, but I mean, just like he fits that particular game plan a lot more than than what what Hydra brings. But I, I could be. He, I'm sure that he will work in Hydra. I'm sure he'll function. He'll be very useful, actually. But uh, the thing that I'm most interested in about this this piece of news is that Immortal Hulk is a Midnight Sun. Everybody. That means that that uh, Siege of Darkness, he's going to be doing an attack during the Siege of Darkness. I'm stoked. I'm stoked. He is going in my list 100%. <laughs> I am excited. Who's coming out, Fred? <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you this. They took him from a model that I was questioning whether or not I was going to buy to one that I'm 100% buying. Well, who, which model's coming out of your list, though? Oh, which is oh Malekith. Oh, okay. That's uh, he he. They're both sevens, and I I I hate taking Malekith out because I love him. He does a lot of work every time he's on the table, but I think that Immortal Hulk will do more work. I think it will be better, at the same price point. Fair enough. Especially since he's affiliated. Maybe we should so, run Doctor Strange too because it's Defenders. I mean, we'll see. You're right. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it, Fred. <laughs> uh, I think that that is all that we know news wise. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that's that's been released by AMG. It's it's weird. Our we had a a Twitter bot that was uh, giving us all the information as nice, easy to see posts on our Discord every time that AMG did a post. But Twitter uh, got rid of that bot, <laughs> unfortunately. So yeah, they banned uh, the we, the service. Uh, another step in Twitter's mini step decline into obscurity 
All right. Well, let's move on. Craig, can I do one thing before we do that, please? Sure thing. Sure thing. Okay. Now, I know I mentioned uh, Cork's uh, tournament on the 29th at the Bookery uh, in Fairborn, Ohio, which is right near Dayton, which is literally, it's right uh, right next door to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. I'd also like to tell people if they want to make a day of it, um, they can, um, the Wright Patterson Air Force Base has the Air Force Museum there, and it's totally free to the public. So okay. that's an activity that people can do. If they find themselves over there and maybe they want to use their Sunday to, uh, you know, uh, go in and uh, see see the history of the Air Force of this great country uh, from its infancy to its uh, groundbreaking uh, scientific discoveries and rocketry. So Awesome. Uh, I'll tell you this. I do love a good museum. And I, uh, I went... Uh, a couple years ago, I went to the Air and Space Museum in, uh, not the Air and Space Museum. It's the the I went to uh, Kennedy Launch Base in Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. It's not in Orlando, but it's down there. Uh, and I forget the name of the museum, but it was such an interesting museum. So I love I love going to museums like that. They're okay. one of my secret loves. Yeah, and like I said, it, it's worth the value because it's totally free. So, all right, awesome. Uh, I don't think that we have anything else to talk about here, which is just, I mean, we'll just move on to why we're all here today, which is we're talking about Gwenpool, <laughs> and and I'm maintaining my streak of not being prepared. For this moment when it happens it's becoming just an ongoing joke all right gwen pool uh her name is gwendolyn pool which is you know great uh she has four physical defense three energy defense and four mystic defense she is six stamina on her front and six on her backside she is four threat size two and she moves medium. Uh, hey, Steven, why don't you do her attack suite? Okay, excellent. Uh, our first attack is a physical attack called Gabby Swords. It is range two with a strength of five, and it is zero power cost. After the attack is resolved, this character gains power equal to the damage dealt, and on a wild, you will trigger Pierce, change one of the defender's uh, defending characters, crit, wild, or block results to a blank. And then we have our second attack. This is a physical attack also. Gwenpool's Bag of Tricks. It is range 4, strength of 4, zero power cost. After this attack is resolved, this character will gain 1 power. And then on a wild hit trigger it is the Gwenpool Special. After this attack is resolved, the defending character gains one of the following special conditions. Bleed, shock, incinerate, or poison. And last but not least, we have an energy attack. It is called This End Toward Target. It is range 4, strength of 8, and it will cost you 4 power. After this attack is resolved, the target character gains the incinerate and stun special conditions. And then on a wild trigger, we have Scorched Earth. Before damage is dealt, all other characters within two of the target character suffer one damage and gain the Incinerate special condition. All right. And Brad, why don't you finish out her card? Uh, Travel through the gutter space. Cost two. Uh, As long as she's not holding an objective token, you place her within three of her current position once per turn. Uh, that's active. Reactive. Recon powers activate. Cost X. While attacking or defending during the modified dice step, spend up to three to reroll uh, your attack or defense dice once per turn. That's important. Once per turn. And then plot armor. It's reduced damage by one to a minimum of one. All right. 
So that is uh, Gwenpool. Uh, my first question is both of these pieces of art have her on a moped. Have we seen what her, or well, I guess the the moped's on fire and it has a sign that says gone fishing on the, on the damage side. But uh, have we seen what her model looks like? Is yes, she on Brett. a moped? No, she's not on a moped. Okay. Okay. She's launching herself I, well, with a rocket launcher. Okay. I, I, I'm asking because I was wondering what size. I, I, you're right. We have seen her picture, and I'm remembering it now. You can see. <laughs> I feel like an idiot. Uh, but uh, do you know how big that base is? Is that a medium-sized base? I think it's a small base. Uh, uh, all right, never mind. That's worse. I was uh, I, I was holding out hope that she would be on a larger than a small base, just to make her movement shenanigans a little bit better. I think it is actually one of the better movement shenanigans tools, the travel through gutter space. I think that's. It's only cost two, and you place her within range three of her current position. Yeah, that's good. Which is pretty good. That's pretty good. You just can't have an objective token. Yeah, I think that that's almost all of those. Not every single one. No, you can it's with, something uh, they've started adding Hawkeye. recently. Right, because oh, okay. Hawkeye, Hawkeye can have an objective and do the same thing. Yeah, and so can Black Hat. Hers isn't range right. three. Yeah, it's not range three. It's only range two. Yeah, for Black Hat. Um, well, yeah. I'm, you're right. It's not the same. But I was say, I was just meaning her her place effect. Okay. The, I think that's a pretty good thing on her card. The retcon powers activate is also nice. It's nice having dice fixing, but it's... Only once per turn, which I didn't notice until Brad pointed it out when he was reading it. But that is that hurts it a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I'm a little bit underwhelmed here. If I'm to to speak, why don't you speak on her, Brad? Um, I think that she is much more resilient than you probably think at first. Because she has four defense and two different stats. She can reroll one defense per character attacking her. Uh, and she reduces damage. Um, she can also give out shock, which is unreliable. Uh, it's only a 30 percenter on that. But I think she's going to stick around. And she's got 12 health, which is... I think one above average for her point cost. So I think she's going to stick yeah. around a lot longer than people think. And that makes her a little bit better. Pierce is also always good. What are your thoughts on, on her, Steven? What are your thoughts? Um, Honestly, to tell you the truth, um, I would agree with Brad that she fits in the fact that she's very resilient, but just reading this card initially, I don't know what she's supposed to do. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, if you're talking about resilient boys, there are resilient people in this game that are, that do more than she does that do that show themselves on the battlefield a little I mean, she does. It's not. She doesn't do nothing. This end toward target can do a lot of damage and puts out stun and incinerate uh, without a trigger on the target, and can put out incinerate on a huge bubble of models around the target. Well, so, but that could also be your own people. Also, right. it is well, other characters, not other enemy characters. I guess what I'm getting at is that we. She's definitely not a control piece, right? Right. Um, with her limitations on travel through gutter space, she's not exactly a scenario piece. And then last but not least, she's 
except for her, this end towards target. She's not really an attrition piece either, you know, because her first two attacks are physical and that's the highest defense in the game. So, and neither one of them are exactly standout attacks. Uh, I, I should say that the reason we did not do Gwen Poole last week is because uh, the picture was bad, and I alone thought that the Gwen Poole special was double wild trigger, uh, and it is not. I was wrong. I was very wrong. I should have just listened to what everyone else was saying, because double wild would be a much worse trigger than wild hit. What's the percentage on on if it were double wild? It's like ten percent. Ten percent on four dice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So my confusion comes in, what exactly do I want her to do? Because, you know, there are specific characters that are made to do specific things, and they do them really well. Um, she's basically a generalist, and maybe a generalist is good in some lists, but a lot of lists, you know, they have, they, they tend toward, it, it, they tend towards specialized characters to do a job. And like I said, besides standing around and not going away right away, I don't know what that job is. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about generalists, the generalists that really see a lot of play play uh, are also ones that can be used in a very specific manner. Like I, the, the person I think that she, she's up against at the four threat category, she's up against people like Venom. She's up against uh, like Black Dwarf. I think that both of those characters stick around probably as well, if not better than she does. And they do a lot more on the table. Right. Cause Venom can be a control piece cause he's got a throw and he's got a, a pull. Um, he also is an attrition piece because he's got the attack back and his attack suite's not bad either. And his um, attacks can heal him. He's got an attack that can that if he does damage, he heals all the damage that he does. Right. So, and then Black Dwarf can do the reverse bodyguard. He also has the damage uh, reduction. Uh, he's got a throw also that is a little bit better than Venom's. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. I don't know why you would look at this one when you have those other options, unless. I, Unless she fits an affiliation that can Yeah, use. that's what I was about to say. I think she, or we'll have to see what affiliations, but I think she could find a home in affiliation. I don't think she's going to get splashed unless you just like Gwenpool. Yeah. Uh, they've also said something along the line that uh, there are going to be some nice cards for, for both Gwenpool and Squirrel Girl. And this is a model that I bet we'll have a couple cards that will absolutely rule. You know, something real least, real handy to have. They'll at least be crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least be fun. Have some fun to bring to the table. Like, would you would you even take this character over Rhino, per se? I mean, good question. Uh... All right, hold on just a second. Why don't you guys talk? I've got a train coming. Oh, okay. Um, for a splash character, probably not. But who knows what affiliation she's going to be in. True, true. I'm just saying people tend to put Rhino as a splash in sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just because, bar, barring that he has a very good tactics card, okay, his movement is crazy. Um, he does have that size four throw. He reduces damage. He builds power pretty good. I mean, she is so, she is more resilient than Rhino. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I like what he brings better. But I exactly yeah, yeah I'm just part of her, I don't see her getting splashed, but played yeah, yeah. Part of her resilience is also the, the dice fixing, yeah. being able to fix your dice. It, it, and it says, in the attacker or defender, does that uh, does it say her dice? Hold on, let me reread it. This character may reroll one of its dice. Okay. 
All right, never mind. <laughs> but still, it's uh, that's a pretty useful ability to have. Well, I think her power is going to be at a premium also because she does have that uh, plot armor where she reduces by one. So she's not going to be building as much power either, even though she's... And that's the trouble with some resilient characters, right? They don't build power that well because, yeah. one, one, their attacks usually need to be close, okay? So they have to plot on into the melee. And then once they get to the melee, once they start getting, you know, smacked back a little bit, they just don't build that much power because it's like, oh, I've done two damage to you. Yes, but I reduced by one. So you only get one power back, right? Because you only take one damage. So, right. so that retcon powers activate might not be done as much as we're thinking. Plus she has a, a four cost spender too. So. Yeah, you're right. And a two cost place, which will probably come up a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I just don't. We'll have to see, but right now, the jury says maybe not so great. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that we're pretty. I I shouldn't speak for everyone. I think I'm not high on her. I'm not high on her. The I think that if I want someone to stick around, I take different people if i want if i want someone to do any of the stuff that she does i want different people why wouldn't you take lizard at you're right class, exactly right? that's lizard is a is a perfect model for sticking around and he's a point less mm -hmm. yep and he's on a medium base and he has a throw and he has a throw yeah <laughs> yeah well uh we're, uh, I, I'm talking some. I'm talking some crap about her. Uh, I think, I think that we should move on to our letter grade. I think that we've discussed what she does as much as we can. Uh, so, why don't we start with Brad? Brad, okay. what do you give Gwenpool for your letter grade? I think, depending on affiliation, she might be just a solid piece that you play a lot. Um, in affiliation as part of your core uh, but she's probably not getting splashed very much I think she's decently bulky uh, her attacks could use some love so I think B minus a B minus okay B minus. Uh, what are you going to give her what are you going to give her Steven well, just from the characters we discussed previously against her um, and not knowing anything about affiliations or tactics cards, I'm just going to be at a solid C right right at the moment. Uh, I think that I'm down there with you, Steve. I was actually going to give her a C minus, mm -hmm. uh, and I think I am. I'm giving her a C minus, and I feel like I'm being quite down on her. But I just don't see. I, I will have to see what her affiliation is. We'll have to. Do you think that she could, she would be a force? I don't know. It's but I don't know possible. But in discussing the the character that comes in the box with her, okay, Squirrel Girl had a power that kind of wowed you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's like uh, re -roll two dice of any dice. Re roll two. I mean, uh, not any dice, but. Uh, attack, defense, and dodge rolls. Well, even the, two. even the tippy toe takedown, right? Yeah. Okay, because that that can get a little crazy. But there's nothing that's like really crazy on here. No. I think that what what might be crazy on what might it might be the numbers. She's got high defense stats. She's she got does. medium to high stamina. And she has the ability to fix dice. So it might be a case where it's just hidden in the stats. Like, there's nothing on the card that jumps out. It's just what what she does is in the numbers. Which is fine. I mean, there, there are characters where that works real well on. I, I just... Uh, I might just be missing... I'm just not high on this. I'm just not high mm -hmm. on this. 
and, and that's perfectly fine too. I mean, so we're in the general bar ballpark of each other on the grade. So. Yeah, not, uh, below average. Uh, all right. Well, uh, we're, we're kind of rushing through. I don't think that we're, we've even made 40 minutes yet. Uh, but Brad, do you have any comic book recommendations? For I, Gwen Pool? I, I know sure that she... do. Okay. You know that she's what? I know that there there are some comics. She is a fun character, uh, who. It's 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 very much more about the, the the personality and the comedy. Yes, definitely. So I have yeah. two recommendations today. Both of them are very fun comics. So the first is the unbelievable Gwenpool. It's by Christopher Hastings, and there's a variety of artists on this series. Uh, this is Gwenpool's first ongoing series. She has recently come from our universe into the Marvel universe. Uh, she doesn't think that anyone matters but the main characters. Uh, and so, and she needs some money to like get a place to live and food and stuff. So she starts working as a, a mercenary. Uh, as you do. As, as you, you do, do. Especially when you think nobody's real. <laughs> and that you couldn't even accidentally kill Spider-Man if you messed up. Because he's got plot armor. I mean, she's kind of right. She's kind of right. Uh, and then she uses her knowledge of the Marvel Universe... To help her in her mercenary. Hmm. So. Uh, this is also the series. Where she ends up working for MODOK. Um, oh boy. For a little bit. What? She knew MODOK. And she worked for him. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. A series is. Uh, a lot of fun. It's definitely not serious. It's it's joke after joke. The second one uh, is Gwynpool Strikes Back. So this is by Leah Williams and David Baldion. And this was her last ongoing series. Because Gwynpool is worried that she's not popular enough to keep getting printed and does not want to fall into obscurity because she doesn't know what will happen to her. So she does her best to keep people interested in her comics issue to issue. So she does things like break into the Baxter building and hold the Fantastic Four hostage. Um, she has a like um I want to say battle royale but less people are going to know what battle royale is than what's the really popular one Hunger Games she has like a Hunger Games okay. thing with different superheroes uh she interacts with most people in the Marvel universe as part of the series and uh and if I said the last one was full of jokes. This one's like pouring out of the gutters between panels filled with jokes. Some of them are already <laughs> dated, just as a warning. Oh boy. Because they were oh very boy. much okay. very much in the internet culture at the time. But most of them hold up. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, uh, here's a question. Has she ever run into Peter Parker? Of course. She, she called say, him Peter. Oh. <laughs> and she, did she, and she called Spider-Man Peter? Or? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and boy. she called Miles oh. Miles. <laughs> Great. 
<laughs> uh, at the end of Gwenpool Strikes Back, she figures out how to make sure that she sticks around forever. And she she retcons herself to do that. It's it's good. It's funny. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, before we move on, I should point out that I believe that we have Brandon with us now. Is that correct, Brandon? I'm here. Okay. I, 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 I snuck in. All right. Uh, well, I think we should take a step back and allow Brandon to have some words about Gwenpool about the model so what is your take why don't you give us your take i guess it's uh, uh, treat it as if i had asked you first yeah i mean i don't know what i don't i didn't hear anything I, I joined during the the comic reading so i have no idea what anyone said so um i can wing it and hope you guys didn't have terrible takes or something i don't i don't know <laughs> uh, i would like I mean, to point out I would like to point out that the art on the front and the back side of this card might be the best of any card ever printed in this game. <laughs> I do like the art. It is good. I like that she's on uh, her moped is on fire in the back in the on the back end. And they're making s'mores and the the little shark has a s'more as well. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> Everything about it is just chef's kiss. Um the the model <clears throat> Gwynpool from top to bottom I think is really really good actually I I think this model is going to be really hard to kill and really like her attacks don't do a ton of damage but having a wild pierce on her builder and being able to reroll up to 3 of those dice um with retcon powers activate Plus having natural damage reduction and being able to place itself within three if it's, as long as it's not holding an objective token um, for only two power seems really, really good. Uh, just being able... Yeah, I feel like she's going to do a lot of damage. I think the, the bag of tricks is probably the worst attack she has. Um, her spender is really good as well. Giving out stun and incinerate and then if you hit a wild you can give other creature other ca creatures other characters um incinerate and a damage yeah i think in to 12 total health is about what they they're very consistent right now on their four threat models as far as like the health pool uh 12 has been the consistent average um but this model gives out a lot of condition or has the possibility of giving out a lot of conditions um can do a good amount of damage um and also just rolling four four dice on the attacks that matter in the game right now like the we are getting a lot more energy attacks but having four physical and four mystic uh plus damage reduction is going to be really tough and a chance to modify defense dice is going to be really strong i think she's going to be really tough uh we don't know her affiliations is that correct, correct. that's correct yeah Depending on her, f and there's not really affiliations that sh she really stands out to be in, right? Maybe Criminal Syndicate. I was thinking, well, yeah. I, I was contemplating whether she will make A-Force. I actually don't. I mean, they just kind of, they've kind of gotten away from just putting all the females in A-Force. They kind of... I'm doing. They, I've got a. They... I've got a wild take on this. Actually, I have no idea. I, I really think, have no idea. I think she's going to be a rogue agent. It does not. Uh, that'd be card. on our card, right? Yeah, rogue agents printed oh, on cards. Oh yeah, that's right. Dang it! Look at me not doing Marvel correctly. Uh, I I kind of I thought that though uh, before the card was spoiled and we didn't see it on there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I've. I didn't. I mean, Brad, I didn't. If you did, you say there an affiliation she might be in. Criminal Syndicate, maybe. That's the only one that seems to make sense, which is uh, just puts me in more of a dilemma in my life, and I'm not sure how to feel about it. I okay, already I'm live. Gonna... I already live in a world where I want to play six four threats. Like I can't. <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't uh, need that anymore. But I think to... this. 
lift the veil here, uh, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say that uh, my my take might have been bad by your opinion, because I was definitely not up on her. <laughs> what what grade I'd, would you uh, give her, Brandon? What grade would you give did her? Did you guys did you guys already grade her? Uh huh. Yes, probably. We did. Uh, not knowing tactics cards, not knowing literally any possible affiliation that she could be in like she fits in really well under kingpin um which is what i like to do in my life if anyone has never noticed um if i've ever i don't think i've ever mentioned that on the the cast before have i that i i, uh-uh. I like i like criminals i like criminal syndicate and kingpin. in fact brandon um, i've known you for a long time now <laughs> And I play against you all the time, and this is the first I've heard about it. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever really talked about it. I should, uh, I should be more vocal about that opinion. Um, oh, letter grade. Oh God, I'm probably gonna be. I'm gonna get a minus. Holy moly! You gave her the Holy highest moly. grade. Yeah, I by I, far, by far. I don't see anything that she does that's bad. And well, here's the here's the issue that we landed on, or that uh, that I, I'll just speak for myself. Uh, I feel like she what she does best is stick around. She sticks around best because she's got like a lot of defensive tech. She's got good defenses and a pretty solid stamina block. Uh, she has I, offensive tech too. I mean, she does, but the, I mean, you're not wrong. She's got dice fixing. Uh, pretty good dice fixing. Her attack suite is not impressive. You I mean, ignore the middle attack. You, yeah, you look at the top and the bottom, right? A range four eight dice spender for four that can damage multiple characters and give out incinerate and stun. Seems yeah. good. Plus you it can. Good. Seems good, right? Um, five, and a five dice builder with Pierce is pretty. I mean, that's a good attack on a lot of good models. And she can reroll dice. Plus, yeah. if she's near people, she can, she's can. she got the defense to back it up, rolling 4-3-4 four, four, with damage reduction, plus being able to reroll dice. Um, she can move herself across the board. Cause she's on a medium-sized base, right? No, uh, she's no. on a small. Is she on a small base? That, that's what I was contemplating when I first looked at this, that whether she was I'm on a medium base again. or not. Uh, because that would change things substantially. I thought uh, she was on a medium-sized base, but I could very easily if be she's wrong. she's on a medium base, that that place effect is great. Is, like, uh, really good. She's on the same size base as Squirrel Girl. It's a small. Yeah. Okay. It's still a good place effect, but it's less good being on a medium base. Being on a small base, I mean. But uh, I kept thinking about the models that she would be competing against in in the category of person who sticks around good and who does good attacks. Like, I was I, thinking about... I'm, ba- I'm also really hopeful that she's going to have, a, like, she's going to have tactics cards. And there's a lot of tactics cards in the box that they come with. Yeah. Uh, part of my grade, I guess, is... They've done a really good job on tactics cards lately. I think they're. I think both of these models, her and Squirrel Girl, um, as of recording, we do not have the tactics cards yet. Um, I, I have a feeling we're gonna get some pretty good tactics cards in this box. I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. And this is a character that uh, some tactics cards could really make a big difference. So yeah, there's three in the I'll, box. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what my grade was. My grade was a C minus on oh. her. Yeah, I was very far from. Yeah, here. I think that's too low. I was a B minus. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> I, it is kind of hard too because like not knowing what affiliations she's gonna play with in like any capacity. I also really love the model. Yeah, the model's really good. I just. I, I do like the ball. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I don't. I don't. I just. I mean, I'm looking at her, and I've looked like I, she doesn't do anything bad. You're right. She doesn't. She but, doesn't do anything bad. But, but she, she also has, doesn't do anything. 
Yeah, she has no just, control. <laughs> so she's got defense and offensive tech. She's got damage reduction and she's got place effects. There's not much else that you can really put on a model. There's not many models that have all of those things. I don't know if you can name another model that has all three of those things. Like, models get play just because they have damage. I mean, look at Lizard. Like, Lizard literally just has damage reduction and healing factor, and he gets played. And like, he that's all that. Throw. Yeah, and I mean, that's all that card does. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, people who listen to this are going to hear me bring up that Lizard does the stick around thing uh, for one point less and talk about that as an up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, the problem is yeah, the fours. I, I, fours are really deep at this point. Like, it's fours are really, really deep. So, I mean, I guess really I can get are. that. They really uh, are. And and uh, I I think that she just doesn't do. I think she is going to see a lot problem. of play and probably whatever affiliation she's affiliated in. Okay. I don't know of an affiliation if that she could be affiliated in that she wouldn't see a good amount of play. Okay. All right. Well, there we go. That's our our Gwenpool. We are the most divided that we've ever been, I think. I think that and we're spread out. Like we fill that divide. <laughs> All I, right. I, I think, could just be wrong. It's fine. I think that brings All the right. average to a B minus, making me correct. God damn it, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's just move on to uh, to Brandon. Why don't you put her in a faction? T talk about what faction that you hope that she's affiliated with. Um, uh, so I, the one of the ones I want I thought about really was uh, I really so from the beginning I the first one I thought of was like Steve uh, Steve Rogers Avengers because you can place her on turn three or turn one. That seems good. Three yeah. from her position. Which seems really good. Um, in humans, you can pass a power and then place her on turn one. Um, a force, you could probably place her on turn one, depending on. Like she would have to activate last. Um, I don't know if that's good, really. She's got the distance attack, so you don't really need her to be up close and personal. Um, but I think she's going to be really good at getting objectives. Um, and I think she plays. I think she. I didn't have a. I don't have an actual list put together because I was running really late today and I haven't got one put together. I'm trying to do this yeah, we're kind of on the fly. You on the spot here. Sorry. Yeah, you're fine. Kind of doing it on the fly. Um, do your segment and let me come back to it. Okay. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to bring today uh, is a series of books that recently had a new book come out in that series, uh, and that is the Red Rising series of books by Pierce Brown. Uh, this is a, a fantastic far future uh, sci-fi series, uh, the, and that it exists in a highly stratified society and what happens when the lower the lowest people in that highly stratified society rise up and decide to take control of the the whole society itself it is an outstanding series of books the first book is called red rising i highly recommend that people read it uh and I think it's it's really, really just a wonderful book series. And that's it. That's it. Uh, Brandon. All right, I'm back. Have you? Yeah, I, I I rushed through it. No, you're. Yeah, why? You didn't have to do that. Um, you didn't have to do that at all. All right, I've got one though. Um, I, and this is the also to Brad's point. This, this is probably the reason she could be affiliated with Criminal Syndicate. She plays really well with Modoc Scientist Supreme. Mm. Really well. She was also so, a mercenary for a very long time, but continue. Yeah. 
So a couple things. She, to your point, Fred, she stays around, right? Yep. So Modog doesn't like to get attacked, so he can send those attacks to her. True. His leadership also, if you're holding or contesting objective and you get one or more wilds in your roll, you can change one of the dice to a hit or a defense, depending on if you're attacking or defending. So more offense and defensive tech. Plus with the wild pierce on her, she's got a wild trigger on all three of her attacks, so you're really going to be fishing for that wild. And now you have a double pierce on one attack. You have, so you can pierce twice with stabby swords. If you hit the Gwynpool special, you can pierce plus give it, you know, bleed shock, incinerator, poison. And then if you scorched earth on this end towards, this end towards target, now not only are you giving multiple characters incinerate, stun, well, incinerate, and then stun on the character you targeted, plus wild, but it also now gains a pierce. So you're already fishing for wilds, and those are going to help. Plus you already have the ability to retcon powers activate. Um, and then with Modok, Modok's all in this world are beneath me. You can help pay for that if you have the extra power, which she might use her power. Per, I don't know if she'd use her power all that much. I think she might be able to generate a decent amount of power on her own. Um, but being able to the sacrifice to be precise once she's dazed, having being free, sending it to her with damage reduction, plus rolling four three four defenses, I think, and plus the leadership plus her retcon is going to make her really hard to be removed, um, and it works really well under Modoc Scientist Supreme. Okay. Or with you could say, it, you make a very good point that like all that stuff is is a really good interaction with with Modoc Scientist Supreme. Yeah. Like it'd be very strong combination. Yeah, I mean, being able to so yeah, I mean, the idea <clears throat> if you can get up. So on turn turn two, you're looking at possibly being able to attack twice. And if you can get a double pierce off twice, you're going to have the power to do pretty much whatever you want. And if you didn't pick up an extract, you can then travel through gutter space and go to another. You can go. You can move yourself to contest a point. Well, um, I'd like to clarify, you can't take an extract through gutter space. I said when you're not when if you oh, don't pick up not, an extract yeah if you pick up an extract okay yeah so miss, yeah so turn one you're not going to want to pick up an extract go contest probably like your center point you can get two attacks off that have a possible double pierce plus now you're going to gain the power and now you can travel through gutter space to a side point um you could contest so if you're on a C and you're in the middle you could go to the left or even the right um if you're if it's like a down the middle and then maybe the extracts or say superpower scoundrels, you can contest the middle on turn one, then move back on turn two to the back point, and then the, move that back point model forward, keep them, keeping her safe. Or again, near Modoc, you only need to be what within two of Modoc or three yeah. of Modoc, but I three. It's within range two. Yeah, yeah, range two. So then, if Modoc's a little bit behind you, you can pop back to a different point, staying within two of Modoc, being able to, so he could send his attacks to you. Uh, you don't really have to worry about that until he's dazed, and he's not super easy to daze either. So, well, all right. Well, that's Gwenpool, everybody. Uh, we've been uh, very separated in our takes, but that's interesting, and I guess we will see how she plays on the table. But uh, until we find out more. That's it for this t this week's episode. Uh, everyone, go out there and have some fun, play some games, come to the upcoming tournaments, and I will see everyone later. Goodbye.